Welcome to Daily Lifestyle with Celebrities. When you are the crown prince of the country that controls the world's second largest oil reserves, uh, the sky's the limit when it comes to satisfying your luxurious cravings. The Saudi prince goes all out when he wants to splurge on things that suit his expensive taste. From palaces to private jets, he's got it all. Let's take a dive to see some of the luxurious things owned by Prince Salman, starting off with his yachts. Owning a yacht is almost like a default for any billionaire, which is why it isn't surprising that he has two to his name, Pegasus the Eighth. The first is the Pegasus the Eighth. The Pegasus was considered to be one of the largest in the world some years ago, and I'm pretty sure that's what got the crown prince interested in it. At the time of its production, the yacht was referred to as Princess Mariana. This was way before the yacht changed ownership to Mohammed bin Salman, popularly known as MBS. The yacht was built in 2002 for a Mexican billionaire, Carlos Peralta, and was bought by MBS in the summer of 2014. The impeccable interior design was done by the French design house Zaretti. The interior was done so perfectly that one can confidently call the yacht home. For the exterior, the super yacht has a length of 78.6 meters, a beam of 14.4 meters, a draft of 4.5 meters, and a volume of 2,479 gross tons. The yacht has a steel and aluminum structure, and it is powered by two Deutz engines. With these engines, the yacht can achieve a top speed of 18 knots and a cruising speed of 16 knots. Now to the best part of the yacht, her amenities. She features many amenities that will definitely not let you miss your home. Among them are the spa, the large swimming pools for relaxation, a large cinema, a part deck with a dance floor, a barbecue, and of course, bars. It even has a children's playroom. This isn't quite all. It also has a piano, a beauty salon, lights, a beach club, a gym, a deck jacuzzi, Wi-Fi, and of course, air conditioning. The super yacht also has a helicopter landing pad, which can be converted into a golf driving range. This yacht has it all. This vessel can comfortably house 12 guests in its six suites. Out of the six suites the yacht has, two are VIP cabins. There are also two double cabins, one master cabin, and one twin cabin. She is also capable of accommodating 26 crew members who would be attending to the guests on board. The Pegasus the Eighth is also not short in terms of tenders and toys. As a guest, you can enjoy a custom 35-foot Oino 12-seater tender, a ski nautique, wave runners, jet skis, assorted inflatables, and towables. With all her amenities, it is not surprising that the Pegasus has a price tag of $120 million attached to it, and of course an annual running cost that can go as high as $12 million. To rent the yacht for a week, you should be able to cough up $650,000. If you think this is expensive, you should see what his other yacht costs. The Serene With a length almost double that of the Pegasus VIII, the Serene is said to cost a whopping 500 million euros. The Serene was initially built for Russia's vodka tycoon Yuri Scheffler for $330 million by Italian shipyard Fincantieri, and her interior was styled by British designer design house Raymond Langton Design. With a length of 133.9 meters and a beam of 18.5 meters, she was one of the top 10 largest yachts in the world at the time of her delivery to the owner. To get this yacht on lease for a week, you will have to cough up $5 million. I mean, that is what it cost American billionaire Bill Gates to have this for a week with his family on vacation in 2014. The Serene has the capacity to accommodate 24 guests in her 12 suites, which include one VIP. Other accommodation options that are available are one master bedroom, seven doubles, and three twins. With so many guests, it is only right for the yacht to be able to accommodate 62 crew members to attends to the needs of its guests. The amenities this yacht has are enough to make anyone feel at home. It has a sun deck with a wet bar, a pizza oven, and a teppanyaki grill. It also has an indoor climbing wall, a dedicated children's playroom, two helicopter landing pads, a fully equipped health spa, and a beach club. The yacht wouldn't be complete without multiple swimming pools, an underwater viewing room, and of course, a full conference room. Well, there is more to the yacht as it has other features, which include a dance floor, wheelchair accessibility, soft beauty salon, elevator, satellite communications, gym, deck jacuzzi, Wi-Fi, and air conditioning. The yacht Serene can be seen carrying a submarine and a helicopter tender. The submarine the yacht carries is a GSE Trieste VAS 52560 submarine. It is an all-electric submarine that can carry almost five people to a maximum depth of 160 meters for up to eight hours. The submarine has a price tag of $2.5 million, while the Eurocopter EC-145 has a 
list price of $5.5 million or more. Now to the exterior. The exterior is just as good as the interior, as it was built with a steel hull and aluminum superstructure. Serene is powered by eight MTU diesel marine engines, which is enough for her to comfortably cruise at 14 knots while having a maximum speed of 18 knots. This yacht is not your regular yacht. It is an award-winning yacht. She won the World Super Yacht Award in 2012. The yacht has also been said to house another of the Crown Prince's extravagant purchases, the Salvatore Mundi. This brings us to the next expensive thing the Prince owns, this painting, called the Salvatore Mundi. The painting is said to cost almost the same amount as the yacht Serene. This painting is said to have cost a whopping $450.3 million. I'm sure some of you are wondering why on earth he would splash that amount on a painting. Well, it is the work of the legendary Leonardo da Vinci, and paintings of this caliber aren't cheap and are rare. Although some art historians have argued that he only contributed to the painting and that the work isn't entirely his, he is still the recognized artist of the Salvatore Mundi. This amazing piece of artwork was purchased at an auction, held in the New York sales room of Christie's on November 15, 2017. The artwork initially cost the previous owner, Russian billionaire Dmitry Rybolovlev, $83 million, but it was sold for five times that price. Talk about a super profit. The Crown Prince wasn't the only one with eyes on the painting. The Qatari royals, too, had an interest in it. The Qatari royals were offered the Salvatore Mundi for $80 million, but Mohammed bin Salman made sure nobody but him was going to be the owner. The painting is said to be the most expensive artwork ever bought, replacing the interchange that was sold for $300 million in 2015. The artwork is an oil-on-walnut panel painting, and its dimensions are 45.4 centimeters by 65.6 centimeters. In the painting, Jesus Christ is shown wearing an aged blue renaissance dress while holding a transparent, non-refracting crystal orb that symbolizes the celestial sphere of the heavens and indicates his role as Salvatore Mundi. He is also making the sign of the cross with his right hand. In spite of this depiction, the painting has also been dubbed the male Mona Lisa by some art historians. Well, since the purchase of the painting, it has not been displayed in public, but sources have revealed that it has been spotted on MBS's yacht, Serene. Other sources claim that it has been in storage in Saudi Arabia since 2020 and is going to be displayed in the soon-to-be-built museum and cultural Center in Al Ula. The renowned art historian Martin Kemp has also revealed that the art gallery is likely to be completed in 2024, as there have been moves to get him to take a look at it. Chateau Louis XIV. Well, if the art gallery takes too long to complete, he can have it moved to his French home, the Chateau Louis XIV. The French mansion is another expensive thing the Crown Prince has splurged on. The house had a price tag of $301 million at the time it was purchased in 2015. One thing this purchase and the Salvatore Mundi have in common is that they broke world records with their prices. This house set a world record for a residential house when it was purchased. Maybe the Crown Prince does have a thing for breaking records. The mansion was constructed between 2008 and 2011, which is enough time to make this house a masterpiece. The property, which is surrounded by moats and is situated on a 23-hectare walled site between Versailles and marly le roi has a constructed surface area of 7,000 square meters, of which 5,000 square meters are living spaces. This house was said to have been built to pay tribute to King Louis XIV of France, France's Sun King, by Ahmad Khashoggi, who has had a hand in the renovation of historic buildings in France. It took 200 workers, 13 types of marble, and 15,000 sheets of gold to complete this architectural masterpiece. The house features exquisite decorative paintings and very elegant stonemasonry. It favors nature and features a tree-lined labyrinth, a small farmhouse with goats, stables, flowers, flower beds and embroidered box hedges, in addition to perspective tricks and topiary yew trees clipped into tiny pyramids. The gardens are one of the most attractive things about the house. The gardens have been beautified with elaborate fountains, statues, and well-kept lawns. There is an outdoor pool, and for the interior there is an indoor pool that has a rain spout falling from the ceiling. Impressive, right? Wait till you see the next feature. One of the remarkable features of this house is its underground chamber, which makes it look as if you are surrounded by a large Aquarium. This is probably my favorite part of the house, and I'm sure the popular reality TV star Kim Kardashian, who visited the place, 
loves it as much as I do. The interiors are lavishly furnished with fine furniture, expensive finishes, and cutting-edge amenities. Some of these are a library, a wine cellar that stores up to 3,000 bottles of wine, and a theater that can seat 20 people. The mansion is said to have 10 bedroom suites, two ballrooms, and other fascinating things. The Al Yamama Palace. If you think the Chateau Louis XIV is grand, then you should see the Al Yamama Palace. The Al Yamama Palace is the official residence of the Crown Prince and is located in Riyadh. This is where important guests are hosted, and it is also where the Crown Prince carries out his official duties. The Crown Prince often receives important guests in this home and also treats them to luxurious services during their visits. The palace covers 11,500 square meters and was the largest structure in Riyadh at the time it was built. The palace is so grand that it makes other palaces look modest. This is expected from a country that owns one of the world's largest accessible oil reserves. The palace is an architectural masterpiece that fuses both traditional and modern architectural styles. The palace's interior shows the rich heritage of Saudi Arabia. The rooms also contain historic pictures of the nation. From the design on the walls to the aesthetically pleasing lanterns in the rooms, the palace oozes elegance. The palace shows unique craftsmanship as it is made of exquisite Italian marble floors and intricately carved ceiling and wall panels. The chandeliers that can be seen in the palace are also exquisite and give the palace a graceful look. Other features the palace has are the large hall, which accommodates large gatherings and official events. The hall is said to be as big as three football pitches, covering 1,200 square meters. One thing we know the palace is not lacking are its meeting rooms and halls. For a royal palace that is home to a series of government officials, the meeting rooms are enough to meet the demands of the different gatherings that are held in the palace. These halls frequently feature opulent furnishings, elaborate chandeliers, and exquisite artwork. Sources have said that the palace features a coronation room, over 1,000 rooms, a bowling alley, a movie theater, multiple swimming pools, and a mosque. The exterior of the palace is quite impressive, too. It has beautiful gardens, well-trimmed lawns, and water features. The surrounding area of the palace maintains an elegant and serene atmosphere. This palace is one of the multiple homes the Saudi family has in their name, the Urga Palace. The Urga Palace is another palace that belongs to the Saudi royal family. The Urga Palace is also situated in the capital of Saudi Arabia, Riyadh. The Urga Palace is also a place where the royal family has official meetings and gatherings. The Urga Palace has welcomed honorary guests like the former American president, Barack Obama, who visited the palace in 2015. The president was said to be on a condolence visit after the passing of the then king, Abdullah bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. The visit gave people a closer look at the interior of the building, since the Urga Palace prioritizes security and is not open to the commoners. The president was met with a grand reception, as the royal do not manage funds when it comes to entertaining their guests. The palace has premium furnishing. This can be seen from the doors to the furniture in the palace. Even the tissue dispenser that can be seen in this picture is not your regular one. This is made of gold. Sources also confirmed that when it came to their feeding, the royal family went all out to feed their esteemed guests. The meals set before them included lobster, lamb, jeweled rice, and other delicacies. Furniture like the chairs that were also in the palace were said to be made of gold. I'm beginning to think the family is obsessed with gold at this point. The waste bins that are present in the palace are said to be made of silver. Their choice for silver is interesting for a change. Apart from the high quality finishes, the palace is also adorned with beautiful artwork that gives it a premium touch. It is not surprising that the family has gone all out to beautify the Urga Palace. The Urga Palace is mostly used for government events, state receptions, and cultural festivals. These events showcase Saudi arts and customs to the outside world, and it would be wrong for the outside world to not get a feel of the oil money on their first visit to the country's palace. The palace is also used for hosting meetings with courtiers and entertaining Saudi VIPs, and it has premium features like prestigious Italian marbles just like the Al Yamama Palace. From the carpets on the floor that scream luxury to the chandeliers on the high roof, this palace is the epitome of quality furnishing. We have seen his luxurious homes and his premium yachts. I'm sure you are wondering what else he could possibly own. Well, there is his private jet. I'm sure you were not expecting him to fly like a commoner, Boeing 747 BBJ. The prince is said to cruise on the Boeing 747 BBJ for his in-air trips. He is said to have a couple at his disposal, but he has been seen riding on the HZHM-1, a Boeing business jet that was built in 2021. The Boeing 747 BBJ is an opulent private aircraft that is largely based on the Boeing 747 commercial airliner. The jet is not lacking in high-end amenities, and
and custom-designed interiors, as the main focus of the Jet is to provide its users with comfort and convenience. It is not surprising that the Crown Prince will have an interest in the Boeing 747 series. After all, many rich and famous people have been said to have one of these. I'm talking about his uncle, Prince al walid bin Talal, Sultan Hassan al-Bolkia of Brunei, and also President Donald Trump. The cost of this private jet can go as high as $300 million. When you look at its amenities, you can decide if it is worth it or not. The Boeing 747 has a spacious interior that allows passengers who enjoy large spaces to enjoy their time in the air. His uncle's jet is capable of accommodating 400 passengers, has a dining table for 14, several lounge areas, and a separate seating area for 50 associates, so his shouldn't be any different. The interior of the Boeing 747 BBJ series has been incorporated with high-end materials, luxurious furnishings, and unique design features. The jet is said to feature king-sized suites, inviting seating areas, dining areas, conference rooms, and entertainment systems in the cabin. There are also roomy lounge areas on the Boeing 747 BBJ that are intended for unwinding and socializing. To make the flight comfortable and enjoyable, these spaces can be outfitted with sofas, armchairs, and entertainment systems. The dining facilities are also top-notch, as they are equipped with dedicated dining areas capable of accommodating multiple guests. These spaces have elegant seating arrangements and tables, allowing passengers to enjoy fine dining while in the air. His uncle's jet and the Sultan of Brunei's jet are said to have tableware that includes custom Baccarat crystal highball glasses with sterling silver bases that detach for polishing when the crystal is washed. All this can be expected in the Crown Prince's jet. The aircraft also offers advanced entertainment systems, including large high-definition screens and surround sound systems. The bathrooms aren't short of luxury either, as they have amenities such as a shower in the master bathroom and gold sinks. The amenities are not all that are enticing about the jet. The Prince's jet is also rumored to have a number of cutting-edge safety and security features, making it one of the safest and most secure private aircraft available. And as for performance, the Boeing 747 BBJ can fly non-stop on long-haul flights with a range of up to 8,000 nautical miles. The Crown Prince also once offered his private jet to Imran Khan, Pakistan's Prime Minister. MBS didn't think it was comfortable for him to fly commercial so he offered him his private jet. What a man. Looking at his purchases, one would think he has everything a billionaire would want. He does. What is it that billionaires are increasingly adding to their portfolios these days? A football club. Yes, he made that happen in 2021. Newcastle United FC. Newcastle United is a football club that competes in the Premier League, which is the highest level of the English Football League. The English Professional Football Club is based in Newcastle, and it competes along 19 other English football clubs. The club has had the likes of Alan Shearer and Andy Cole play for the English club, and the current vice captain of the football club is England's Kieran Trippier. Saudi Arabia's public investment fund, whose wealth is controlled by the Crown Prince, is said to own 80% of the club. The club was previously owned by Mike Ashley, who put the football club up for sale in 2009 at an asking price of £100 million. He then took it off the market in August, and he put the club up for sale again in October 2017. Although I can't really put my finger on why he was doing this, it is possible there was ongoing bidding from different people, and he was trying to get the highest, like everyone would. The Public Investment Fund and some other bodies were linked to the club for the first time in 2020, and although some fans were happy about it, this link had lots of criticism in England, which elongated the deal. This made Saudi Arabia withdraw their interest in the football club, but a year later the deal was done. It was announced on October 7, 2021 that the club had been acquired by Saudi Arabia after an alleged intervention by Boris Johnson. The fans were happy about the Saudi takeover, and and this was mostly because, with Saudi Arabia's funds, they would be able to get whatever player they wanted. Money wouldn't be an issue. Well, they were right, as the club was able to lavish 63 million pounds on Alexander Isak. The 63 million pounds spent on this player was a record-breaking fee for the club, as it is the most spent by the club on a player, and they're just getting started. You see why they were happy now. The club, which had not finished in a decent position for over a decade now, finished among the top four in the last season that just ended in May 2023, the club clung to the fourth position, making them qualify to play in the Champions League next season. Who knows? They might just be among the top three next season, seeing as they can't afford the quality players they want. Although there are still people talking about the country using the football club for sports washing, the ownership of the club is still in the country's hands. His list of luxury purchases goes on and on, but there are also a few things that the Crown Prince has done out of a good heart or charity that might have put a dent in his pocket. Uh, the next things aren't properties, but good deals 
deeds that might have cost him millions too. Philanthropy and good causes. The Crown Prince and his father contributed the sum of $40 million for the Good Housing Charitable Subscription Campaign to Judescon. The National Housing Development Association oversees Judescon. The project aims to support and help needy families in the housing sector. The campaign is set to provide housing for needy families. The Crown Prince's share of the donation was $13 million, and that of his father was $27 million. MBS and his father also gave the National Platform for Charitable Work, or Ishan, a combined $18.6 million in April 2023. As they launched the third iteration of the National Campaign for Charitable Work through Ishan, King Salman and the Crown Prince each gave a donation of $10.6 million and $8 million respectively, according to the Saudi press agency known as SPA. Mohammed bin Salman also shows his regular support for refugees with humanitarian relief and development assistance. He also owns MISC, the Mohammed bin Salman Foundation, which was founded in 2011 with the aim of discovering, developing, and empowering Saudi youth to become active participants in the future economy. The foundation has signed a partnership with 500 startups to promote entrepreneurship. Uh, the foundation isn't all about entrepreneurship. They have also acquired 96% ownership of the Japanese video game company SNK. Additionally, the 9th UNESCO Youth Forum in Paris in 2015 included the MISC Foundation as one of its major partners. The prince was not the only one investing in this foundation. The Gates Foundation was also partners with the foundation until they decided to cut ties with the foundation in November 2018. Before the end of the partnership, the Gates Foundation had committed $5 million to the MISC grant challenges, but it is unsure if they actually pulled through with it before their exit. The prince is also involved in the Prince Salman Charity Housing Trust. PSCHT. In an effort to find the best and most cost-effective way to lessen, if not completely eradicate poverty in Saudi Arabia, a committee of academics, sociologists, and decision-makers formed the Prince Salman Charity Housing Trust in 1997. The project assists Saudi nationals with a minimum three-year residence in Riyadh, a monthly income of less than 800 US dollars, and no accumulated wealth. Priority is given to those deemed to be in the greatest need, and the primary recipients are frequently drug addicts, the elderly, the home homeless, orphans, people with disabilities, and low-income households. Through the Housing Trust, three different communities have so far seen the construction of 325 homes, and another 336 are currently underway. The houses are said to be smaller than the typical Saudi home, which is 450 square meters, but they are still significantly bigger than the average size of the residents' prior residence, which was 75 square meters. It is not surprising that the Crown Prince is into charity. He must have learned it from his father. His father once hired a private jets to transport Qatar's pilgrims on Hajj, as the Gulf crisis was causing issues with the movement of some of the pilgrims. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman We have seen how the Crown Prince spends his money. It is only right to know a few things about this big spender and how he actually makes his money. The Crown Prince is the child of the third wife of King Salman, Fada bint Fala al Hiflain. He is the seventh son of King Salman and the first of his mother. He is married to his first cousin, Sarah bint Mashur, and their union produced five children. He was made the Deputy Crown Prince and the Minister of Defense in 2015, but his role changed two years later, after his uncle was dismissed from being the Crown Prince. He became the Crown Prince in 2017 and has been serving as the Prime Minister of the country. Before then, he was working as his father's personal assistant, having had experience in the private sector. He graduated from King Saud University with a degree in law and ventured into politics, taking after his father. The Crown Prince comes from a family with a cumulative net worth of over $1 trillion. Although this wealth is divided among thousands, the prince's share as of 2018 was $3 billion. His net worth would have seen an increase as time has gone by. As the crown prince, Mohammed has been making moves in a bid to enhance the reputation of his government, regulations limiting the authority of the religious police and advancing women's rights, such as lifting the ban on women driving in 2018 and weakening the male guardianship system in 2019 are some of these. Other cultural advancements made during his rule include the first Saudi public performance by a female singer, the opening of the first Saudi sports stadium to women, a rise in the number of women working, and the opening of the nation to foreign tourists through the implementation of an e-visa system that makes it possible to apply for and receive foreign visas online. Mohammed also dabbles in investment sometimes. He invested money through the Saudi Arabia Sovereign Wealth Fund in December 2020 into Take-Two Interactive, Electronic Arts, and Activision Blizzard. Activision Blizzard, Electronic Arts, and Take-Two Interactive each received 14.9 9 million, 7.4 million, and 3.9 million shares, respectively, of the total investments. His interest in this stems from his interest in video games during his childhood. Apart from his personal
personal things, he also gives expensive gifts that are worth a lot. The Crown Prince gifted the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle, diamond earrings worth £500,000 as her wedding gift. The Duchess was spotted with it at the 70th birthday party of King Charles at Kensington Palace. The 37-year-old was ranked number 8 on the Forbes list of the world's most powerful people in 2018, and he was also named a Game Changer in 2017. Having seen some of the Prince's extravagant purchases, which of them is your favorite? I bet you enjoy this video. There is more where that came from. All you have to do is click one of the cards